It's always a pleasure when we can bring uh, a special guest to the Lafayette Sports Network, and that is the case today as I'm here with Coach Pete Carrillo, legendary Princeton coach and 1952 Lafayette graduate. Pete, it was so good to have you back for the Hall of Fame dinner on Friday night, especially as two teams from that era, 57 and 55, were inducted. Talk about the early 50s and the beginnings of, of what was a great run of basketball teams. Well, uh, for me, my life started here when Coach Brent Benikoff became the head coach. And uh, all of a sudden, from an ordinary player, I became better than ordinary. And so that thing followed with the freshman class he recruited, because I helped him recruit all of them. And uh, it was Ernie Peters, Corky Gaultier, Tony Mack, the shooter whose father uh, was a great player, became a coach uh, in Jersey. Who was the best shooter? Tony Mack. No, you said Tony oh, Mack. Oh. I, uh, Hur not Hurley. Uh, the coach, uh, you know, those, those names are legendary. And, right. and I actually had the great fortune of working with your mentor. And I remember you saying one time as we were talking, you looked off and you just said, nobody saw the game like Butch. Talk about what you mean. Well, he just, he just had a way of seeing things that, like a great artist who sees something in a painting that somebody of lesser talent doesn't see. What, you know, the potential that somebody might have or what he can do or how he thinks without saying a word. He, he saw all that and... Uh, Conveyed that to the players. That's right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know, Coach, uh, you took that, that kind of a base and, 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 and took it to another level, it seems, at Princeton with all the great teams you had there. What did you look for in a player and how did you get the kids you had to do what you wanted them to do? Well, I'll tell you, he influenced me a great, a great deal because what, what I had been uh, trained to do in high school and even here until he got here was to be sort of a, uh, a tactician or, or uh, you know, you, you take care of particular things that go on. And he, he taught me to look at the whole picture and what goes into the making of a player and whether he can pass, you see, you're looking for certain things, what he sees, how much he cares, all those things that you think you can build on. And, uh, but I, I never got to the point where I could think the way he did. There's, there's well, only one. I mean, I, I was, I'm pretty satisfied with what I did, well, but to think that I could do a little bit more would be to be like him. And, well, uh, I, I, I was blessed, Coach, to see the, the progression. It's like learning a different language. I saw the root word when I learned with Butch, and then I saw the culmination of it when I watched your teams at Princeton play. You know, I want to go back to your, your last game or second last game at Princeton. You beat Penn in a playoff game over at Stabler Arena, right. and you wrote on the chalkboard, I'm retired. Right. And I talked to you not long after that, and you said, the kids today want something that I can't give them. Did you mean that, or what did you mean by it? That's a tough one. Uh, yeah, it is tough because I, I don't quite understand it. I think what happened is like, uh, uh, even here, that's been 14 years with the Sacramento Kings and back, I, I could give them things, uh, but I don't know whether they would see it. You know, the, the way, the way that the, we're living today in this country and what's important and what is not important. Because if you play for Ambedikov, uh the camaraderie that he developed, we were able to develop with your teammates was so great. When I talk to you, Coach, the life lessons are, are, are directly visible, uh, life lessons, and you apply them to the way you approach your team. And I saw that with Butch, too. They were unspoken, un, they were very nuanced. Uh, when you signed my son's book, you remember what you signed on the inside cover? Watch the person in front of you, they tell you what to do. Right, right. And you know, you look at the Princeton offense, it becomes, it looks like it's so complicated, and yet it's broken down into a simple right. two and three man play. Right. Well, what's happened there is that it's become obsolete. And so I know I have about five or six guys coaching basketball now, and I, I remind them each time I see them, make sure you're not running the Princeton offense because it's become obsolete. Yeah. It's a game where you, you drive and kick, drive and kick. The center has disappeared. A lot of three-point shooting and uh, fast breaking. 
Even when you don't have a passion. Even when you don't. It's right. about decision making, Coach. Right. Hey, see, think, do. Right. Coach, we got to wrap it up because we've got a game to get to in a few minutes, but it's been wonderful. Uh, again, it's always great spending time with a guy like uh, you. Well, Thank you, Coach. I hope that I get a chance to meet Joe. I mean, 108 years. <laughs> it's almost as old as Lafayette. <laughs> exactly. We'll see him in a few Whatever minutes. Thanks, Thanks very right, much, Coach. Yes, sir. Right.